It is Sunday, January 21st, 2024. And on this week's edition of Sunday Sofa Time, we're talking about all things Equinox. Welcome back to my living room here in Hamburg, Germany. I'm Morgan from the very unofficial travel guides. I've been making travel videos for over 15 years of popular and not so popular tourist destinations to give you a very honest, unofficial look at what it's like to be there. And as mentioned, today we are gonna go through everything about my recent experience on the celebrity Equinox. From the first day to the last day and everything in between. Our journey on the Celebrity Equinox actually began up in West Palm Beach with us disembarking the Margaritaville at Sea Paradise cruise ship. Posted a bunch of videos about that. They're all online here on the very unofficial travel guides. But we booked our transportation between the two ports using the Brightline train website, which will also let you pre-order Ubers to take you to and from the train station and ports. It was really easy and the Brightline trains are very nice can highly recommend it to get around down there in Southern Florida. Checking into the Equinox and boarding the ship went really quickly and we even took a short tour of the spa before heading back to our cabin. Speaking of the cabin, I was a little bit disappointed with the size and layout and especially the cleanliness of our cabin. As I showed you in the video tour I posted a few weeks ago, there were some weird cosmetic and cleaning issues that should have been attended to and altogether, even though the size is basically the same as a cabin on Royal or NCL, something about the layout made it seem cramped and outdated. There are no outlets on either side of the bed, for instance, and you know, when you're paying extra to cruise with a line that markets itself like Celebrity does, I just wouldn't expect to find someone else's toenails on the floor or hairs on the chairs. I asked this question in the cabin tour video, but I'll ask it again. Is this what you would expect when you think of cruising with Celebrity Cruises? As usual, we went up to the top deck for sail away and got to experience one of the things that makes this ship unique, and that is a large part of the Lido deck is actually grass. For me, not a specific reason to book this ship, but I guess I would call it a very interesting gimmick. That night, we ate in the ship's main dining room and had to wait in a huge line to get inside. I guess everyone showed up at the same time. You know, Marcus and I don't usually go to the main dining room, so we don't know if this is kind of normal or not on Celebrity, but I just don't remember ever having to wait in a line this big to get into dinner. I didn't get any food pics on this first night because we just wanted to enjoy our dinner. I do have some of other nights, and our table neighbors were kind of annoying, actually, and I just didn't want to draw their attention more to us and then have them all of a sudden become our new best friends. You know I mean? Sometimes you kind of just want to keep to yourself. The big open atrium space in the middle of the ship was often where people would meet up after dinner in the evenings and there were activities offered with live music and dancing. We had a glass of wine and looked down over the railing before heading to bed on our first night. By the way, the big atrium in the middle of the ship is home to two other interesting things, one of them being a gigantic real living tree and a three-story multi-level library, which is where you will find books. And another place you can find books is Amazon.com and Kindle, which is where you'll find my book, Getting Stitches on a Cruise Ship. Picking up a copy of this easy read is not only a way to get something fun to occupy your time while you're waiting to board your next cruise ship or sitting at the pool. It's also a really great way to show a little bit of extra support for what I do here on YouTube. So if you feel inclined, pick up a copy of Getting Stitches on a Cruise Ship. It's available on Amazon now. Back to the tour. The next morning, we had a quick breakfast in the Ocean View Buffet before heading down to the tender boats over to the island of Grand Cayman. As mentioned in the full video I did of the day, we were planning to go to Coral Beach Club, but the taxi driver talked us out of it and took us to his beach instead, which was not exactly what we were looking for. Seven Mile Beach is still a very beautiful beach though, and we did get a swim in the ocean and some sun before heading back to port where we walked around a little bit and did some window shopping. The tender service went really smoothly as we approached the quote unquote hole in the side of the ship. I was reminded of how cool it is when you are cruising with one of the newer celebrity ships like a couple years ago, we cruised with the Celebrity Apex, and they have this magic carpet platform on the side of the ship, which makes tendering so cool because you're not jumping out a hole on the side of the ship. There's an actual dock and a whole separate 
lobby area and it just feels really like classy and like you're coming back to a private yacht. That evening on board, the ship was offering a late night pool party, which we really enjoyed. There was a lot of party atmosphere out under the stars. It was still warm enough to be outside. And the cruise director and activity staff did a great job of getting everyone involved. There were live acts from the performers on board, live music, and then a DJ took over. And you can see we had a good time. <laughs> No comments about my singing voice, please. The next morning, we arrived in hot and sweaty Cozumel, Mexico. I was up early to play pickleball, which was only okay on this ship. The court is not full size and the location at the front makes it also really windy. But if you can't go a few days without getting your pickleball fix, the Celebrity Equinox has got you covered. I'd never cruised to Cozumel before and I thought it was cool how many other ships were docked there as we were arriving. In fact, we were right next to the Wonder of the Seas, which at the time was still the largest cruise ship in the world because the Icon had not yet officially been launched. Like I said, Cozumel was hot. We did a self-guided food and drink tour which began with us walking down the very long pier through the little village on land and hopping in a taxi to take us over to the downtown area. Our first stop was a recommendation from many of you, thank you so much, called Poncho's Backyard. This is one of those insider tips that you would never stumble upon if you didn't know it was there because it's hidden in the back of a gift shop. It was even harder to find when we were there because the whole street was under construction. I'm so glad I followed your advice and went there because we had a great meal and a great afternoon at Poncho's Backyard. From there, we walked a few streets towards the city center and stopped for a drink at another recommendation from you all called Wet Wendy's. They offer gigantic frozen drinks with a really large list of interesting flavors and ingredients and we also enjoyed hanging out at the bar there and chatting with the bartenders and other fellow tourists. The bartender also let us try the peanut butter margarita, which was good as a shot, but I don't think I could drink an entire peanut butter margarita in full size. How do you feel about a peanut butter margarita? Does it sound like something you would want to try or no? Our taxi ride back to the port was a hot one because it was like 400 degrees outside in the afternoon and the taxi had no air conditioning, but we made it and spontaneously stopped at Margaritaville for a Mezcal flight as we watched some of the other ships sail away. I think Cozumel is one of the ports where cruisers often lose track of time and end up stumbling drunk back to the ship at the last minute or even later, but we actually didn't see any pier runners on our visit. We also did not become the pier runner, so that's good. We did, however, get to see the wonder of the seas sailing off into the sunset, which was pretty spectacular. This would kind of make a good desktop background, wouldn't it? That night was the first night that we got to see one of the shows from the onboard musical and dance ensemble. The talent was very high, but the show was kind of weird. It was another one of those instances where they were trying to tell a story that wasn't really a story. It had something to do with a poet who had all these ideas in his head that he didn't want to let out because he was afraid they would escape. And it involved a giant hat in the middle of the stage, lots of colorful costumes and scooters. It was entertaining. The people were really talented, but it wasn't a show that we would have wanted to go back and see a second time like other shows we've seen on Celebrity and Royal Caribbean and other cruise lines. The next day was our only day at sea, which gave me the opportunity to do a lot of filming. I took a look at the buffet in a little more detail, and the food on the Equinox was consistently very high, at least in our opinion. As you know, if food is good or not is a very subjective thing, but we enjoyed all our trips to the buffet and may have had one or two desserts too many. That afternoon, we hung out at the pool and watched the very popular Officers vs. Guests volleyball tournament. People were really getting into this. I think we took an afternoon nap and that evening's activities included a huge silent disco party in the atrium. Okay, so if you don't know what silent disco is, I'm gonna try to explain it to you here really quickly. In order to participate, you need to grab one of the headphones that the staff will provide for you. These headphones are special because they can receive signals from like different radio stations in a way. And at silent disco, there's always at least two different styles of music being played. And the headphones have a little switch and you can switch to listen to the one style or the other style 
And when you switch, the colors of the headphones switch as well, so everybody knows who's listening to what style of music, basically. I'm just realizing it's really hard to explain this in a way that shows how much fun it is. But part of the fun is you don't hear anything except for what's in your headphones. So you'll be on the dance floor dancing to like Shakira or something, and then all of a sudden, half of the people around you start singing Living on a Prayer. And so you think, oh, I gotta switch to that. And it's kind of like a battle of music styles, and it's interesting not only if you wanna dance and be part of that energy, but to have the headphones on and be on the side of it and just sort of look at how the colors change on the dance floor and see what song is more popular than the other song. And on the Equinox, we experienced something I've never seen before, and that is not only were there three channels to listen to, but one of the channels was the live band. So yeah, there was a live band in the atrium playing but you couldn't hear them actually playing unless you had the headphones on. It was, it was really cool. The next day was our final day on board and our first time visiting the tiny island of Bimini. One thing that makes Bimini special is the beach club, which technically counts as the private beach club of Virgin Voyages. So when a Virgin ship is in port, it is only open for those cruisers and there is no entrance fee. On other days, it's open to hotel guests and cruisers from the other ships, but the entrance is not free and the price goes up or down depending on which ship you are cruising on. So literally, people who cruise there with Carnival pay less to get into the same beach club than people who cruise with Celebrity. I'm kinda not into that. Altogether, I did not think the beach club was worth the money I paid to visit. There is a beautiful public beach right at the end of the pier that costs nothing to visit if you just wanna have a swim and throw your towel down on the sand. However, Bimini is famous for its aquatic life and there are literally sharks swimming all around very close to the beach. Not necessarily dangerous sharks, but sharks. My tip for Bimini is to take the free tram for the entire loop around the island, maybe get your feet wet at the public beach, and then just head back to the ship and hang out at the pool. That night we saw a second show in the main theater, which was a mix of song and dance with no apparent story that we thought worked very well. You know, when you have a talented group of people like this, and the goal is just to entertain cruisers for 35 to 45 minutes, I don't feel like you need to tell a story. Just have people singing and dancing and having a good time. That's enough. Now, I do much prefer shows like Grease or Mamma Mia that you can see on other cruise ships, but then it's like a full two-hour show with characters that are established who are telling a story and singing about their feelings that you follow from beginning to end. This abstract, I'm a poet, but I don't know it, and I can only speak in rhymes. I have ideas in my head, but if they leave, I will be dead. Thing, it just, it doesn't work for me, but that's just my personal opinion. Speaking of things not working, we also found out that the entire stage on the Equinox is basically not working. You can see there are several platforms and trap doors and things that are supposed to be automated and moving up and down to reveal people, to make people disappear into the stage and stuff like that. And the entire automation system is not working. So the shows that are on the Equinox right now are not the shows that are supposed to be on the Equinox. They're kind of a plan B. And I'd really like to see what the shows are supposed to be like if everything is working like it's supposed to be working. The next morning, we had no problems disembarking back in Port Everglades. It was a little hectic trying to get an Uber to our hotel for the day, but that doesn't have anything to do with the cruise ship. And that was the end of our experience on the Equinox. So who do I think celebrity is right for? Well, I think I can best answer that question by comparing it to other cruise lines that I think a lot of you have experience with, Royal Caribbean and NCL. Celebrity is a lot like those cruise lines, but without the amusement parky style stuff like water slides or go-karts. And because of that, almost no kids. Celebrity is a very grown-up cruise line, and honestly, I would not take kids on Celebrity because I think they would be really bored compared to all the great offerings that other cruise lines like Royal, NCL, Carnival, and of course Disney have 
four families. The food that we experience on the equinox seemed to be slightly elevated, and the atmosphere altogether seemed a little more sophisticated, with most people dressing up at least a little bit in the evening hours, and very few people walking around wearing, like, pajama pants and Crocs. This seems to be a new trend in North America that, I don't know, I didn't get the memo that it's now okay to walk around in your pajamas in public. I don't want to be overly critical because I, of course, am not a fashion queen here, but we just got back from two weeks of Florida going to the theme parks there, and it just seems like I saw so many people walking around in what would look to me like what they went to bed in last night. So if you appreciate dressing up a little bit, and I'm not talking about like tuxedos and evening gowns, although we did see some of that, celebrity is definitely more of what you're looking for than maybe carnival. And it just seemed a little bit more sophisticated, but not in a snobby way like Cunard. Anyways, I might be a little weary of booking the Equinox again or one of the older celebrity ships just because of the cabin design and the state that we found our cabin in. But maybe I should have been a little more vocal about the issues that we experienced on that first day. I know a lot of people who watched the cabin tour video said they would have marched straight out of that cabin and back down to customer service, but you know, I guess mostly I didn't want to get anybody in trouble, but maybe I should have given Celebrity the chance to either give the cabin a deep cleaning or transfer us to a new cabin. Altogether, we know that cabin was not in the state that it should have been left in for cruisers. In the upcoming weeks here on the Very Unofficial Travel Guides, I will take you along with me on the Independence of the Seas with my sister who was on her very first cruise. You'll see us talk about the food, which she found disappointing, take a tour of the cabin, which I liked much better than our cabin on the Equinox, see us laugh our way through a very adventurous and fun day in Labadee, and more. So make sure you're subscribed before you go. Thanks for spending this part of your Sunday or whatever day it is that you watch this with me here hanging out in my living room. I'm Morgan from the Very Unofficial Travel Guides and I hope to see you back here soon. Bye-bye.